Very good evening to you all, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anthony Murphy, currently known as Echo India 1597, but soon to be known as something else when I get my official license as uh, an amateur station. Um, just at the moment, I've been listening to the HF bands, but to be honest, there's nothing to listen to. Activity very quiet at the moment, despite the fact that there are apparently 29 sunspots at the moment. Um, there is no propagation at all on the bands. Uh, 20 metres is closed, 40 metres there's no activity, 80 metres there's no activity, and nothing on the lower bands either. So, what does one do when one wants to do a bit of radio on a winter evening? One picks up 2 metres. And here's America, yeah. And that is thanks to a technology that's known as, uh, for those who are not in ham radio, known as Echolink. Echolink is basically a, a type of uh, node or a repeater. In this case, I am listening to this American station through my local node, which is Echo India 2 Mike Oscar Golf. That's Mount Oriel Gateway, located on a hill called Mount Oriel, which is about five or six miles from this location. Now this is a simple little handy radio, handheld ADI AT201. It's a five watt, uh, two meter transceiver. Uh, as you can see, it operates, it's operating currently just on a rubber duck antenna. And on the battery power, I think it only puts out two watts. However, the reception from Mount Oriel here is very, very good. I've been listening to a conversation between a, a guy in England and a gentleman, an operator in the States. This is the wonderful thing about this Echolink technology. Can't wait to get my call sign, can't wait to get my license, start working this thing. Uh, you can connect to Echolink on a computer, the software you can download, and you have to, of course, have your license to use it. Uh, and you can talk through your computer with a headset, or you can access your local node through a radio. Uh, so long as you're within a certain distance of it and it can be heard. So Echolink is one of the aspects of amateur radio that I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, and I know somebody said to me recently, why are you going into amateur radio and you not just use Skype? Well, I am a Skype user, as it happens, and Skype is fantastic technology. But uh, amateur radio and radio in general is something I've been interested in since I was very young. And I love the idea that uh, when somebody makes a phone call on a, on a mobile phone, what they don't realize, or a lot of people mightn't realize, is that the, risk, the signal from this phone is picked up by a local mast, which is sent to another mast, which is sent to another mast, and possibly a satellite, and another satellite, and another satellite. There's a whole lot of uh, very expensive infra infrastructure required for one person to talk to another on a mobile phone, sometimes even if they're only a short distance from each other. Amateur radio is different, uh, although the Echolink technology is obviously new, um, say on the HF bands. Uh, Two amateur stations located in different countries will talk to each other simply by uh, propagation of their radio signal. So one amateur operator has his station, his, his radio and his antenna, and the other has his radio and his antenna. And all that there is between is the atmosphere. And uh, thanks to uh, solar activity and the ionization of the upper atmosphere, uh, there are different layers of, of the ionosphere or the the ionosphere is uh, a part of the upper atmosphere that becomes um, energized by particles from the sun, which helps aid what we call radio propagation. So that's how we talk to each other. How hopefully I'm going to be talking to people, but um, <clears throat> sometimes this allows very long distance uh, conversations to happen. And as I said, once you own your radio and your antenna, there is no cost. It's not like a, a phone. Okay, Skype doesn't have a cost but you have to have broadband which is obviously an ongoing cost. Uh, in one single hop, I learned this from my test recently, um, in an ionospheric wave uh, on, on HF, short wave, on the short wave bands, one ham station can expect a maximum hop of his radio beam or his radio wave of 4,000 kilometers and of course Sometimes uh, people can speak. People in Ireland can speak to ham operators, and Ireland can speak to ham operators in Australia and New Zealand. This is made possible by multiple hops. Um, so, in other words, the radio wave is hop is bounced back from the ionosphere and then bounced up again from the ground. 
So it really is very, very fascinating. Unfortunately, at the moment, as I said, conditions are very, very poor on the band. Nothing to listen to whatsoever, hence the echo link. Great thing is I can bring that handy around the house. I can bring it up to bed. I don't have to sit at the station if there's nothing interesting to work. So I hope this very first broadcast has been of some use. I will put it on YouTube and I'll embed it in hamradioireland.blogspot.com, which is my website. And I'll let you know as soon as the license arrive, arrives. And I will be hoping to record on video my very first QSOs on the HF bands. Not so sure if I'll get to do it on two meters because as soon as I get my call sign I'll be working probably from the car. If I get it during the day I'll work from the car on the way home from work. So we'll see how that goes. I might just bring a video camera or do it on the phone. But uh, in the meantime don't forget hamradioireland.blogspot.com or if you want more information about uh, my local club, it's uh, Dundalk Amateur Radio. That's Echo India 7, Delta Alfa Romeo, EI7DAR.com is their website. Don't forget to check the video links there and um, the uh, webcams, which are often live. Uh, otherwise, for more information in general on Ham Radio in Ireland, check out the IRTS website, uh, Irish Radio Transmitters Society. They are the people who run the exams and uh, Comreg are the ones that issue the licenses. That's comreg.ie. So I'll talk to you very soon. Thanks a million.